Hi, I am Kajer on two wheels and today we will talk about what is power, what is torque, what do they do and what do they mean. So, super simple stuff, huh? So, let's start with torque. What is torque? Torque is basically what you feel when you accelerate. It is the force, the definition, which is not quite the right one, but it's to get you an idea, is the amount of force the engine can produce. Power, on the other hand, is a measure of work done. So it is completely different to what we intuitively feel when we say engine is more powerful. We actually mean it is more torquey. And at least in when talking normally I mean, yeah that's a really powerful bike no actually we mean that's a really torquey bike and I really wanted to show you this but not behind this bloody thing jeez not behind the <sighs> truck carrying a JCB jeez okay so onwards so let's go with a better analogy let's say you have a warehouse and in that warehouse you have a couple of employees Employee A is a gym guy who can move around 200 kilos of stuff all at once. Thing is, since he's a gym guy, when he finishes moving those 200 kilos of stuff, he then has to flex a bit and watch his muscles. So he's kind of slow, but he moves 200 at once. So the 200 at once is his torque, that's torque, the 200 kilograms he can move at once. At the end of the day he has done X amount of work and that's his horsepower. Now let's say that doesn't mean much by itself, so let's say you have another employee, a skinnier guy, a guy or a slightly fatter guy like me. So he can move around in every trip he does to load whatever, a truck let's say, he can move a hundred kilograms at once. But he doesn't have to flex afterwards, so he works twice as fast. At the end of the day, they both did the same amount of work, right? One's moving 200 kilogram stacks at once and then pausing. The other one is moving 100 kilogram stacks non-stop, working at double the speed. And so at the end of the day, they're doing the same work. So they both, both have the same horsepower, meaning they have developed the same work but one has more torque than the other the the gym guy has more torque because he can carry more stuff at once but the other one is more revy because he's faster he does less work but more often so that is exactly how torque and power work and in fact this is actually so accurate the, this analogy i just came up with I'm really proud of it, uh, that it actually explains how you can turn torque into power and you can mathematically convert one into the other. It's a very simple formula, here it is. Yeah, <laughs> not quite that simple, if I had an Africa tin I could do that, but I don't, so I can't. Uh, but basically let's say that torque, and this is not correct, it is a gross, gross simplification. But you can say that torque times RPM is your power. Since but it is roughly that. An engine with the same torque as another engine will be more powerful if it can rev more. That's basically it. There's a, a couple of pretty nasty complications on this, but generically, as generically as saying that a soccer field is basically a piece of dirt with some uh, plants sticking out of it, that kind of generically, uh, it, it's that. Now let's say we have a third employee, a very skinny guy, he can only move 50 kilograms at once. His arms are like toothpicks, okay? However, his legs are like straight from Usain Bolt and so he runs around like a maniac all day, non-stop. He drinks caffeine as if it was water. He actually doesn't know what water is. He only drinks caffeine in Red Bull. He takes Adderall thinking they are chewing gum. And then, at the result, he works four times as fast as the 100 kilograms guy. He 
has pitiful torque. He does a quarter of the work in one go than the 200 kilogram guy. However, he does it eight times faster. So at the end of the day, he has more power. And that is our traditional four cylinder or six cylinders for the crazy people out there. Very little torque, but just works so fast. There's a lot of work then. That's how they are all balanced uh, or how this all relates to each other. Now, about the first part, what do they do? Well, torque is your acceleration. Torque is what you can carry in one go. So when you pull the throttle, torque is the push the engine gives you in one go. Every single time it does one rotation, that's the push it made it pushed you forward with. So 88, say 77, I think it's that's the torque on this one, 77 Newton meters means a 77, a 7.7 .7 kilogram push per meter uh, at each revolution. It's not right, but you get the idea. Uh, because 77 Newtons, since we are using normal units and not American, um, 77 Newtons equates to roughly 7.7 uh, .7 kilograms. So that's the force, like being pushed by a weight of 7.7 .7 straight down from, from, from above. It's not much, but it's per revolution. So actually it is quite a lot. Times that 1000 revolutions per, per minute and you have 7.7 uh, .7 tons pushing you forwards uh, every minute so it's actually quite a lot more than you would expect whatever that's not important and it's probably inaccurate but you get the idea so that's the torque the torque is what allows you to do this that is not horsepower at all that is torque pure simple torque power Remember, power is a measure of work done. It is what the bike can do, is how much work it can develop to overcome drag. That's what power does, it overcomes drag. On vehicles, normal vehicles, we're not talking about tanks and stuff, nearly all the drag is just air. Um, especially at, uh, at any speed that's interesting. Uh, is air drag. Air drag is very simple to calculate. It is the frontal start with, again, slightly simplified. There's a, a bit of more detail to this, but roughly that the majority of air drag is the frontal surface area uh, of the of the vehicle in question. So basically, all bikes or nearly all bikes, again. Uh, GS 1200s with the mandatory side cases aside because those are gigantic uh, roughly all bikes have about the same uh, drag from one another there's differences obviously smaller bikes have less drag bigger bikes have more drag exceptions accepted Ex accepted okay that didn't come out right so everyone has the same dra drag so power equates directly to top speed and you can be damn sure you can look this up that every bike that has say a hundred horsepower will do roughly the same top speed exceptions is obviously the gs 1200 and say an r1 because they have vastly different uh, frontal areas okay vastly different it's like twice as big oh just a, a little top tip Drag increases quadratically or exponentially with uh, speed. So if you double the speed, you have to square the amount of drag produced from the air, which is frankly ridiculous. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> okay. So top speed is the amount of work the bike can develop to overcome that. Uh, power is the amount of work the bike has available to, to use to overcome that. That's why horsepower is usually at the top end of the rev range. Actually that's not correct. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and that is what will give you your top speed. When the bike is doing its most work, that's when you can do the most top speed because you're overcoming the air uh, resistance with the maximum amount of work. 
that's why a more powerful bike can do less than a less powerful bike. It is just top speed. However, like we talked about in the beginning, power is directly related to torque. The amount of work done is obviously related to the amount of work done you can do it to the amount of stuff you can do or you can carry around in one go so basically if you can do it very fast so lots of times you have a lot of power so it is related to torque it is directly related to torque that's why we have this misconception that more power means uh, more oomph it's not it's torque that gives you the oomph but since torque is related to power through the revs and generally all bikes have just about the same revs they are directly related so a more powerful bike will have more oomph more torque than a less powerful bike it's because of that that we have this misconception and let's get that straight that misconception leads to some pretty cra crazy results for example crazy results do you know what is the torque difference which means how much extra torque this lovely lovely engine on the MT-07 or the Tracer 700 which is a oh, awesome engine how much more torque this has from the much maligned NC-750 engine do you know I looked it up I was expecting to say a huge number well actually that number is 0, 0.0 they have the same torque down to one decimal place yeah torque wise they are the same engine which is completely ridiculous you're probably wondering if I have been smoking the weird stuff or drinking or probably both I will explain the NC750 does that but only has 6250 rpms to play around with I think the latest ones have a little bit more revs 250 revs but it's that basically this one has that torque from 2000 rpm all the way up to nine and a half so it's got more rev range to play around with and as a result as soon as it crosses the 6000 rpm threshold it's doing more power so it has a higher top speed the other major difference is you, the torque curve you have to look at both torque curves so that's a, a problem reviewers me included don't usually look at it's just not the maximum value which is what the, the manufacturers give you it's not 77.0 on both bikes it's different because it depends on the torque the engine delivers through the revs and this engine is completely flat it's basically the same torque from 2000 to nine and a half I'm not sure on the NC 750 I did not look that up actually but I would be pretty surprised if it's as flat as this one it's generally quite flat on all engines it, it, it generally goes up as the revs go up for multiple engineering reasons that I don't I'm not really going to get into and I don't really know all of them I don't care but it is a thing it's not always completely flat that's why you say a flat torque curve it means it accelerates at the same rate everywhere at, in every range which is great a uh, four-cylinder engine has this uncanny uh, talent to have a lot of torque when it gets to a higher uh, rev range than when it gets to a lower and a slight difference in torque is quite felt that's why a completely flat graph is feels completely different from a torque curve that's like this so yeah torque wise it's the same engine the thing is one has less revs and so this one has more power because it has more power once it crosses those 6000 rpm it has another 4000 rpm to play with which is the difference between the 55 horsepower the nc 750 does and the 77 i think this one does that's the difference another small detail now that we are wrapping this up is that we are talking about engine torque which has very little relation with the torque that actually goes out to the rear wheel because that torque in the engine will then be multiplied or demultiplied on the gearbox surprise surprise the bike accelerates faster in first gear than in second than in sixth gear you might have noticed that if you ride it might it's just a slight difference it, you might have not noticed that you ac actually accelerate faster in first 
So your torque is multiplied through your gearbox and through your uh, chain and sprocket. And that's where this bike cheats a bit to be a lot more fun. And that it has a very short first, second and third ratio and you can feel that when riding. And then fourth, fifth and sixth are a bit more normal. While the NC has very long gears for fuel economy. So it's it feels a bit more sluggish because you're when you're in first gear in this one, it's like you're almost in second gear on the NC. That's why even though it has a ton of torque and it is a very nice bike to ride because it is it has a ton of torque uh, it's not quite as torquey as this it doesn't feel quite as powerful and you look at the power fixture and say yeah of course it's got 77 horsepower which is bullshit it's got the same torque okay it's just because it has a longer uh, a longer gear ratio so it, it accelerates a bit slower but generally because gear ratios are re relatively uniform with small differences again um, drag ratios are relatively uniform across all bikes again with exceptions never compare uh, a GS 1200 with an R6 these things tend to be all roughly the same with the major differences between being between two cylinders and four cylinders where two cylinders are a bit more torquey and less powerful because they rev less and four cylinders being very revy are less torquey and more powerful so higher top speed lower acceleration which then the, the manufacturers deal with by using shorter gears to mask the fact that your r6 has pitiful torque compared to this one that's the that's the the trick so they do that so that the torque at the wheel is still fun and then in the higher gears it goes longer and longer and longer so you can push the top speed all the way to whatever is the maximum or that the bike does so whatever that is what is torque that is what is engine this is about three times as long as I wanted it to make but it is a very complex subject with a lot of confusion in people's minds I hope I clear that up remember torque equals acceleration horsepower equals top speed and you can actually calculate your top speed straight from your horsepower check it out go check out bike specs and you'll see that their top speed for the same power is all roughly the same again please don't compare GS1200 with an R6 obviously because the GS1200 is about the same width as the oil tanker it's going to be a bit slower than an R6 which has about the same width as a sheet of paper so yeah that's it cage routes